Hi everyone, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today for the launch of the WISE e-learning platform. We're delighted to have you here virtually at the Firkin Crane in Cork City. My name is Olivia Teen and I'm the Communications Officer for the Sexual Health Centre. And before we get started on the panel discussion today, I'm going to hand you over for just a minute to Minister Roderick O'Gorman. I'm delighted to launch the WISE online programme, which is a landmark moment for educators and professionals working with young people in Ireland, and, I, and one that I have great confidence will have a very positive and lasting impact for young people's development and education. I'm very happy to have supported this programme with funding from the Capacity Building Grant Scheme, and this scheme is an objective of the LGBTI Plus National Youth Strategy to provide capacity building measures among service providers to improve understanding of and engagement with LGBTI plus young people and it's very heartening to see the dedication and the commitment of organizations such as the Sexual Health Centre who are vital to implementing key actions of our youth strategies such as training and professional development. Along with training for youth service providers, sexual health education is one of the crucial areas of improvement to support all young people including LGBTI plus young people, many of whom have felt their education in sexual health often discounted their own experiences or indeed their own identities. In 2018, my department worked with the National Council for Curricular and, uh, Curriculum and, Edu and Assessment to get young people's views on the reform of the Relationship and Sexual Education, or SE, programme. Recognising that a step change was needed to bring the cur curriculum in line with what young people wanted to and what they needed to know. A youth advisory group designed the methodology for consultation with young, young members of Corla and Nog across the country. Young people in both junior and senior cycles gave their views and experiences of RSE in their schools and told us what kind of RSE they wanted to receive. The consultation found young people want regular, consistent, equal, non-judgmental and unbiased sex education. We all know there's a knowledge gap among young people regarding their sexual health, and it's our youth workers and teachers who help bridge that gap. Of course, in order to do this, it's vital that you are provided with relevant, up-to-date training that it can empower you to deliver RSE comfortably and confidently. The Sexual Health Centre's WISE programme can assist you in delivering a comprehensive, supportive and inclusive RSE programme for the young people you are mentoring and teaching. This is an opportunity to ensure positive health outcomes for our young people, including improved confidence, communication skills, inclusion, safety and respect, and a greater understanding of consent. Positive sexual health underpins our mental and social well-being. Accurate, informative sex education is crucial to supporting society into the future and will serve as a better support to young people as they transition from school into the next stage of their lives, whether that be into further or higher education or into the workforce. I'm very grateful to you all, our country's educators, for taking the time to learn how and why we should be changing the learning environment for generations to come, and it is a great pleasure to see this crucial training being made available on a national level. Thanks very much. Brilliant. And the Sexual Health Centre is so grateful to Mr O'Gorman and to his department for supporting the WISE platform and for also enabling us to provide it to you all for free. So I'll just point out um, at the moment that everyone is muted and their videos are off. And for anyone who does have a question throughout, we would like you to put it into the private chat function and we'll come back to it at the end. So I'm joined today at the Firkin Crane by two of my colleagues, Mario Farrell and Phil Corker in here. And um, Phil, I'll just hand it over to you first to give us a little bit of a background on your own work. Yeah, sure. So I've worked at the Sexual Health Centre since 2004, which doesn't seem that long ago, yeah. quite a while ago. <laughs> and within that time, I've performed quite a number of roles. Currently, um, I oversee our rapid HIV testing project. I um, am our HIV support worker. I provide workshops to people with intellectual disabilities. Um, I devise and deliver training programmes to professionals. And I also oversee our STI clinic. Yeah. And Mara, will you give us a little bit of an intro? Absolutely. Um, so I have a joint role in the Sexual Health Centre. I work as a research officer, so some of the background to this programme here today. Yeah. And I also deliver youth sexual health workshops, so theory and practice. 
researching how they should be done and then actually going out and trying to make that happen in reality. Yeah. And you have such, I think between the two, you have such a kind of broad remit in what comes under your work, which is so nice because as the creators of the Waze platform, it's great to have that kind of in your pocket already. So before we get into it and the development behind it, let's just have a quick look at the Waze platform itself and see what it actually will look like for all of you when you're logging on. In the top left corner here, you have the Waze online logo and within that is the little owl who's going to guide you through the modules. So let's have a quick look at the modules here. Starting in the top left where you have the introduction module, which you have to complete before progressing to the next module. And that applies throughout. In order to register your account, click register account, where you can fill in your username, email address and password. After registering your account, you'll be able to log in with your username or email address and password. So Phil, can you tell us a little bit about how WISE was developed? How did it all happen? Yeah, sure. So when I was tasked with developing a support piece for professionals delivering RSE to young people, whether they be youth workers or teachers or mm -hmm. whoever they were, I kicked around an awful lot of ideas. Um, and I suppose what I really wanted, I knew I didn't want to develop a manual because there's a, a whole load of information out yeah. there already for um, people to access. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do was develop a tool <clears throat> that would support someone in the moment yeah. of answering a question that they might not be fully comfortable with. So. I was struggling with it for a while okay. and one evening I wrote the WISE acronym on a post-it and I texted our director Martin with the acronym and my ideas behind it and his response suggested that I might be onto something. Okay. So from that acronym I developed a training which was delivered in person mm -hmm. um, to professionals from 2018 and then in late last year um, which seems like a lifetime ago with all yeah. we've been through since. <laughs> Late last year, we got some funding through the uh, DCYA, which we were very mm -hmm. grateful for, to put this online as an e-learning platform. Um, and from that funding, that led to the recruitment of Mira um, in her role, her research role with this project. Mm -hmm. So she oversaw the, the systematic review, she okay. did the focus groups, um, and I suppose I just need to give massive thanks to Moira. She's been a joy to develop this project with um, and I couldn't have asked for a better partner. The dream team, guys. So, um, Phil, you just mentioned the acronym there and you can all see our little, our little owl. So we have a quick clip um, with the owl telling us what WISE actually means and what the acronym is behind it. So we'll have just a quick look at that now. This programme was developed by the Sexual Health Centre as an aid for people engaged in the delivery of sexual health and relationship programmes to young people. You will be presented with a number of statements or questions. We are then going to apply the WISE tool to these questions and statements. The WISE tool was developed to assist teachers or other professionals working with young people in their delivery of sex and relationships workshops to young people. The tool aims to help professionals answer questions or address statements in a comprehensive, sensitive and non-judgmental way. Our hope is that when you have finished this programme, you will be more informed and more confident when dealing with issues relating to sexual health. Let's get WISE working for you. You don't have to do the programme all at once. It is split up into courses. These courses can be revised at any time. Your progress will be saved so you can pick up where you left off at any stage. What is WISE? Before we get started, let me explain what WISE is. WISE is a template to help you to break down any question into four parts to provide the most comprehensive answer possible. W equals what? What question is being asked? What issues might need to be addressed? In the case of comments that sound cheeky or throwaway, where is the teaching moment? I equals associated issues and further information. What information can I provide in the moment? Do I know where I can access information on this subject if I do not have an answer right now? 
Young people have the right to factual sexual health information. Let students know that you will cover this issue or topic in a later session if you do not have the information to hand. Make sure to always return to the issue or topic in a later session so that students do not feel like their queries are being shut down. S equals supports. Which support services can I direct students to? Do I know where I can access this information? E equals education. Were you able to educate the participant? Did they understand the response? If not, return to step one. In this program, you will be presented with a series of questions and statements similar to the ones that may be presented to you by young people. The WISE tool will then be applied to each question or statement to show you how best to answer this. So, Amara, Phil was mentioning there that your involvement in developing the WISE platform was very much research-based, so can you tell us a little bit about why that was important and how that contributed to the development of it? Absolutely. Um, so, my, my main role on this project was kind of research about how, how we developed it, what needed to happen. Okay. And I know this can be a really boring topic for people, <laughs> so I, I suppose just to say, myself and Phil do this on the ground every day, so like we do understand that side of it, the mm -hmm. actual delivering it. So this isn't just a research, like here's a load of books we read, now we know how to do it. We understand that we have to research how to best deliver something like this, but also using the experience we had. So I was very lucky when I came onto the program that Phil already had developed the WISE training for an in-person program. Yeah. So he was already delivering this to professionals to teach them how to deliver sexual health. So credit to Phil and this is colleague appreciation day. <laughs> it was a fantastic thing to come on board and have that. <laughs> <laughs> to, to have that you know like ready to go and um, so I did a couple of things then so I won't bore people but this is actually really interesting and why this is hopefully such a good platform mm -hmm. so firstly we did focus groups with the people who'd already undertaken the research with Phil so I went out and I interviewed them about how they found the content of the WISE program what professionals thought about it mm -hmm. and also if there was anything else they'd like from the program that we hadn't given them so what we got back from them, just to tell people, was that they were delighted with the content, mm -hmm. but people wanted something that they could then use and roll out immediately themselves. They didn't just want to go to a training program and then have to figure out, well, how do I now go on and teach that to a class or to yeah. a group of young people? So that was great for us to know. We also did focus groups with young people themselves. So we wanted to find out how their current sexual health education is, what do they like about it? What's okay. missing from it? And how would they like it to be? So they're the ones that we're doing this for. So what yeah. did they need? So what we found from them was that they would like sexual health to be more inclusive. So right now it's very heteronormative. So they wanted it to be inclusive of all sexualities and genders. They wanted it to be more interactive. So not just, you know, kind of a boring, flat program where somebody stands there with a PowerPoint. They mm -hmm. wanted a bit more than that. And they also wanted it to be more regular. So they said, you know, like sexual health is something that's really important to them. It can be quite a daunting area. They want it more than once a month, yeah. once a year, do you know, kind of thing. So that was great for us to take. So we had some of our own understanding of it. We had the feedback from the people who had experienced the program. Mm -hmm. And then the more researchy things, so I had to do, as Phil mentioned earlier, was a systematic review. So what a systematic review is, is we take all of the literature that exists globally around delivering inclusive sexual health and really narrow it down to find out what is best practice in terms of that. Mm -hmm. So I did that. It took us a long while to get there. But the main findings, just to give people an idea from that, and we were very lucky because we were already on the right track, were that sexual health needs to go online. So it needs to be more accessible and more available to people. So we're there. We have yeah. it. Um, also that it needs to be inclusive. So the young people were right. It needs to be open to everybody and that everyone sees themselves in it. And finally, that the facilitator's attributes, so whoever is actually delivering sexual health and whoever is talking about it, they need to be presenting it in a positive way, in a certain manner, and be open and accepting and listening of everybody and their questions, and that that really affected somebody's experience of it. Okay. So we took all of that information that we had learned and we wrapped it up in the WISE program. So it has a really strong research backing, but also really strong on the ground to people who do this every day have an understanding of, yeah, we have the theory, but also how do we make this work? We know what it's like to stand there to do it. Mm -hmm. So that was really the... Brilliant. And it's so clear from both of what you're saying, how much energy and time went into it, but like how timely was it? You know, like developing this yeah. over the last year and a half and here this we are. not a COVID response. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, there's been so much time behind this. But Murray, you mentioned just about um, young people wanting this to be more of a continuous thing and it just highlights you know how broad sexual health is and how intertwined it is in all of our lives it's such a broad area so just on that point 
Um, Phil, maybe you could take this. How did you kind of whittle down what sort of topics should be included in the platform and what people should be covering? Yeah, I suppose sexual health is a very broad topic mm -hmm. and we need to remember it's not just the absence of infection. Yeah. There is far more to it than that. So sure. obviously we had to look at issues like STIs. We had to look at um, uh, contraception, mm -hmm. um, pregnancy. We're also looking at issues um, in regards to relationships. Um, and I suppose some of these subjects can be quite heavy. Yeah. We, of course, are dealing with sexual assault in this also. Mm -hmm. But from the get-go, every effort was made to make all of the content of the WISE platform as engaging as possible. Um, so there are quizzes throughout. Um, you know, there are uh, activities that keep it interactive throughout the programme. OK, great. And just on that, you mentioned that, you know, there are some heavy topics there. And just if I were, say, a facilitator and I was delivering this information to a class and it did kind of trigger some issues for someone, how would you advise me? What should I maybe do in that situation? OK, and I suppose from the get go, whether it was the wise in-person groups mm -hmm. or this um, online platform, it's still kind of surreal that it's launching today, <laughs> <laughs> but it's happening, this online platform, um, with, with, I suppose, supports were linked to it okay. very strongly from the get-go. Yeah. We made sure that they were hardwired into it mm -hmm. because we did realise that people would be delivering workshops to people who may have needs yeah. um, relating to the issues that were coming up and we didn't want to leave people stranded with those. Sure. So um, within the uh, training, there, is, there are interactive maps at the end of each module or section okay. and when somebody has completed the entire course then those maps are available to them forever uh, under their account so if they need support for a particular issue in their area then they can just go on the map and Perfect. check what's available to them also i need to point out that we and myself are always here so if somebody has any question about the online program about any of the content, about onward referrals, or if they want us to help with absolutely anything, then pick up the phone or send us an email and we'll do what we can. Perfect, so when in doubt, call Phil or Mara, basically. <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, well then on that, Amara, what about someone who is making their way through the modules on WISE and it's all looking brilliant, they have all their resources, fantastic, but they're just not feeling confident about delivering in the classroom. What would you say to that person? Absolutely, and I suppose that's a really realistic question. So mm -hmm. myself and Phil are immersed in sexual health. We talk yeah. about it every day, you know, it's what we do. But that probably isn't the norm for everybody who's mm -hmm. out there. So really, I suppose we thought about that when we were designing this platform. So the training is applicable to somebody who maybe has been delivering sexual health for years or somebody who's just tasked with doing it and mm -hmm. has no knowledge whatsoever. Okay. So we wanted to make, as Phil said, this program interactive and engaging. So whether you're somebody who has no idea of this, from the minute you log on, it's not just another flick through loads of things, like mm -hmm. it's going to grab you. There's videos, there's case studies, there's real world examples, there's games, there's you know everything to really not make you bored, but also make sure that you're actively engaged in your learning so that it really sinks in. Okay. It's normal, I think, for people to, you know, say that's, I suppose, if I was sitting there saying, yeah, that's fine, but I'm still worried about what am I going to do when I'm finished. So yeah. we thought about that. And what we've done is from the research piece that we did with focus groups and our own experience, we have included at the end of the training a full resource pack. Okay. So with the supports that Phil spoke about, but also a full PowerPoint slide that covers all of the modules and all of the information. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who's not sure about how they would go about delivering this, once they've done the training and they're fully trained and comfortable with the information, they can use that slideshow so they get a facilitator's guide, they play the slideshow in the background okay. and it takes them through step by step how to do this. It takes that kind of nervousness or, you know, gives you the confidence that you have something guiding you through delivering the information. So that was really important to us and something we did think about. We also, I suppose, as Phil said, in doing this, we know that there's probably those moments as well when you're not confident can often be the certain classes or the certain groups you might be delivering yeah. it to. So we all yeah. know there's the students that you've no problem walking into the class and you're like, this will be fine. And then there's the group that you're like, oh my God, what <laughs> am I going to say here? Because yeah. this is going to trigger something or it's going to be more difficult. 
So we know that, we've been there, we've all <laughs> experienced it. And we wanted to put that real world into this program. So we've added in little animated videos of real world classroom examples of how do you deal with those awkward moments or that sly comment or that joke moment. How do I do that? And is it, you know, it, hopefully that will take that worry away from somebody of how do I deal with that in the moment? Great, okay, and we actually have one of those animations ready to go showing you how to deal with um, maybe a more disruptive or flippant question in the classroom, so we'll have a quick look at that now. Non-binary people are now expected to be referred as they. I'm losing patience with all these new terms. It is important that all people have the language they need to describe their gender identity. What is the difference between gender identity and sexuality? Sexuality is about who you fancy. And gender is, um... Yes, sexuality is about who we are attracted to, whether it is men or women or both. Gender identity is about how someone feels about their gender. I know it can be a bit confusing to begin with, but it will become clearer. Wait, I don't get it. You're either a man or a woman. That is what is called a binary form of gender. The what? Binary? Yes. Binary forms of gender refer to the traditional roles of male and female. Yeah, and what else is there? You're either one or the other. It is not that simple. There is a whole spectrum of gender. Some people feel exclusively male or exclusively female, while other people feel like they are a mix of both. People who do not fit into the traditional male or female gender identities might refer to themselves as non-binary. I promise this will get easier. Let's start with cisgender. Oh, for God's sake, who are they? Okay, Johnny, you have a boy's name and you are male, right? Like, duh. You were born with male genitals and you identify as a male, right? Uh, yeah. Well, that means you are cisgender. I'm not cisgender, I'm a man. Cisgender simply means that you feel like the gender you were given at birth. Oh. Um, so that might just give you a little bit of a taster of some of the resources within the WISE platform. Um, I'll just remind people actually also at this point to send in any questions to the private chat function and again we'll get back to as many of those as we can towards the end. So Amira, can you tell me a little bit more then about um, monitored learning through the programme? So if I'm doing it, if I'm a teacher or youth worker or whatever it is, and how do I know that I'm taking any of the information in as I'm going along or how does that side of it work? Perfect, yeah. So like we showed in the video at the beginning, from the minute you log in and make an account, your progress is tracked. So you'll okay. see underneath each module that you're going to take, like 100% obviously completed, or if mm -hmm. you've done four or 5% or whatever it is. So I suppose the full program in its entirety takes about two and a half to three hours to complete. Okay. So with this program, it's great. And that's the joy of online learning is it's 100% flexible. Mm -hmm. So somebody can do this when it suits them. So it could be midnight on a Saturday night planning for your week ahead, or yeah. you might be a very organized person who thinks I'm going to sit down and do the full session, mm -hmm. or maybe you're going to spread it out over the course of a couple of weeks and do one <laughs> module a week. So this fits into whatever somebody needs and however they would like to do it. And from the minute they start a module, no matter if they finish the full thing, or they just do a couple of slides and they're interrupted and they need to start again, it will hold their, their progress there. So when you log in, you pick up exactly where you left off. So online learning is offering like this huge, I suppose, benefit to us all because no matter where you are now in the world or the, the country or you know whatever, you can log on to this program and it's there for you. So all of those resources are at your fingertips at any stage, um, which is fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so basically once I've set, set up my free account and I've completed the modules, all the resources and the modules themselves and information are there with me for life. They're mine to keep. Absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, lovely. And Phil, for yourself then, maybe, uh, what about if I, um, I have a, a group of young people, what's the age bracket that I should be focusing on within that? So I suppose it's this, the, the content of the programme is transferable across a very wide uh, range of okay. ages. But the PowerPoint presentation that's um, provided in the resource pack is geared towards maybe if we were talking about schools, okay. senior cycle level. Okay. But again, there will be elements of that that can be used across all age ranges. Okay, brilliant. And what about for the facilitator who's possibly not very tech savvy, if I'm not really used to e-learning, is it still something, is this still a platform that I should be looking at or what do you think about that? Yeah, I suppose when we started off, you know, developing this, this, this platform, we had a very clear idea of what we wanted it to be. And we wanted the navigation to be 
um, very easy to use and to feel quite intuitive. Yeah. Um, and I have to give massive thanks to Digital Funnel who built this platform for us. Yeah. Um, we met with lots of people. We had a very clear vision of what we wanted and Digital Funnel have realized that vision for us. So I need to send a massive thank you to them. Um, I suppose just while I'm in the thank you zone, yeah. um, I may as well continue because we didn't create this in a vacuum. Obviously, as Mira m mentioned earlier, we ran focus groups. We needed to be sure that what we were delivering was going to meet people's needs. Um, I also took advice from Tenny um, for, uh, around some of the trans issues. Okay. Um, we had volunteers who um, helped us with the audio. Um, which wasn't all that easy to organise during lockdown. So sure. a big thank you to Renault and Fezica for that. And also we needed to pilot this programme. So I need to send a big thank you to Derry O'Donovan and the teachers at St. Brogan's who piloted this, um, this programme for us. Their feedback has been invaluable. It was an essential part of this process. So a massive thanks to them. Absolutely, and invaluable is the word, the right word there, I think, because it's just been able to show for yourselves as the brains behind the operation that this mm -hmm. is something that's actually very user friendly, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, for people who are maybe not extremely comfortable with, with e-learning platforms. So what do you think between the two E, what were the most uh, interesting or unexpected aspects as the developers behind it for E, what was the best part of making it? For me, I think the piece I enjoyed most, I suppose I've, I've lots of years of experience facilitating groups of all kinds. Yeah. And in those years, I've heard every kind of transphobic, homophobic comment. I've heard lots of misconceptions. Mm -hmm. So I suppose the most enjoyable part of this for me was scripting the animations to try and challenge those homophobic yeah. or transphobic comments. Um, that was a part of the process that I really, really enjoyed. Good. And I mean, that's so nice because it definitely ties in with our work at the centre. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with the Sexual Health Centre, our motto is no bias, no judgment and no exception. And that's very much the spirit, I think, of all of our work. So it's lovely to be able to see it kind of threaded through the WISE platform as well. Um, and Mara, what do you think what was the best part of making it for you? I think one of the most interesting things for me was we had to develop a condom animation video yeah. to show how to do a condom demonstration. So when myself and Phil go out to deliver workshops, we would have done those in person. Yeah. And with the original WISE training, that was something that people who came would have been taught how to do in person. So we would have had dildos and condoms and been doing that. The whole and thing. A whole shebang. <laughs> and often that can be very daunting for somebody. So again, yeah. working in the area and being very familiar with doing that, it mightn't be as daunting for us, but to ask, you know, teachers or educators, youth workers to one, have this equipment and two, do it was something that maybe people were always a bit wary of. Okay. So having this video has actually been fantastic for us. So it's been a great resource since we've developed it. It's really educational and also fun and engaging. So it's just a short clip animated that shows everything from the correct you know storage of a condom what to look for on it how to put it on correctly and how to dispose of it so all of the facts that you need to deliver mm -hmm. but without any of the faff of needing to have all of the equipment just yeah. play the video it does it exactly Perfect. as it says on the tin takes the pressure off and exactly. we have um, that clip actually available now so we'll just have a quick look at the condom demonstration video there Always check the date on the condom pack and never use any condom that is past its expiry date. Make sure that the condom you are using has the CE mark. Keep your condoms away from heat, light and damp as these can damage them. Carry them in a safe place. Open the packet carefully by pulling down on the serrated edge. Watch out for nails, jewellery, etc. as these can easily damage condoms. The penis should be fully erect before putting on a condom. With one hand, squeeze the tip of the condom between thumb and finger to get rid of all of the air at the tip. Put the condom on the penis with the other hand and roll it all the way down. Be sure to put it on with the roll on the outside. Only water-based lubricants should be used with condoms. Never use anything oil-based with condoms such as Vaseline or baby oil. These will rot the condom and may result in it ripping or tearing more easily. The penis should be withdrawn immediately after ejaculation. The condom should be held firmly at the base of the penis while withdrawing to stop the condom from coming off or leaking. Knot the base of the condom, check for any tears, 
wrap it in a tissue and throw it in a bin. Do not throw it in the toilet as condoms won't flush. Only use one condom at a time and do not reuse. If used correctly, condoms will protect against STIs and pregnancy. So you have some handy tips in there and we'll just check then. So I think we've covered the basis of, of how it all works and uh, why people should use it. So how can people get going? How can you set up the account? I suppose that's the really exciting news today. So officially, as of now, the WISE online platform is live. So everybody here today can log on to the website. It's available through the sexualhealthcentre.com. So if you go on to sexualhealthcentre.com, there is a link that will take you across to the WISE platform where you can make an account and get started straight away. Perfect. So that's just a reminder for everyone that it's absolutely free to sign up and you can head to www.sexualhealthcentre.com and there is a link there for WISE Online. Brilliant. And maybe I'll just point out as well that if anyone does have any questions, Phil and are available so you can get in touch with us at info at sexualhealthcentre.com or maybe directly to Phil at Phil Corcoran at sexualhealthcentre.com. Lovely. So I have a couple of questions coming in that I'll throw at you. Um, one person is asking us, they're a teacher, and they're wondering what about doing an account for the school? Should they do it like between themselves and their colleagues or just themselves? So I don't know who wants to take that. Where you might take that yeah. one. <laughs> no hassle. So I suppose that's a really interesting question and it's something that we've thought about. It might seem easier to create an account as a school as an entirety, to mm -hmm. do it quicker and that everyone's logging in and out. But what's important to know about the WISE Online is this is actually a certified training program. Mm -hmm. So when somebody logs on and they complete the eight modules, they'll actually generate a certificate to okay. you know, have to say you've completed this program, you're now qualified to deliver it. Yeah. If somebody's doing that as a team, then people are jumping in and out and you can't, only one person is going to get a certificate, whoever logged up, their name is going to be on it. Okay. So we would 100% be recommending that people make their own account, do the training, learn all of the information. So like this, you mightn't think that you need everything, I think it's important to say. So like, we have covered the, the full spectrum of sexual health. So everything mm -hmm. is still said from like STIs to contraception to relationships, consent. You mightn't think you're gonna use all of that, but sexual health is intertwined. So every area sure. is linked to something else. You can't really talk about contraception without talking about STIs, which will lead you to HIV. Mm -hmm. So knowing all of the information means you're prepared. So two and a half, three hours, full total training, it's worth doing. You okay. feel prepared, you have it. So get your cert, basically, yeah, your is the cert. short answer, great. <laughs> um, what about for someone who, if they're wondering about the class size, I have someone here asking if there's like a minimum or maximum that they should be doing it with ideally, or is there any? No, no, I mean, the way the programme is designed, the group size shouldn't matter. But okay. I would say if somebody has got a very large group, um, and this is pointed out in the facilitation guide, there mm -hmm. are things you can do to make your groups more interactive okay. and there are tips throughout the facilitation guide. One, for example, at the end of each section that you cover with your, whether it's a, a class group or mm -hmm. in a youth group or wherever it is, um, there are quizzes at the end of each section. You could break the group into teams okay. to um, compete against each other yeah. um, and, you know, have a running total throughout the whole course over whatever period you're running it at. So really there are no limits on group size. Brilliant, okay. And just as you mentioned there, the resource pack, Phil, could you, I know we went into this early, but maybe just for anyone who's come in late, can you just tell us what's in the resource pack exactly? Yeah, there's right. loads in the resource pack. <laughs> <laughs> so we were very mindful of the fact that when people were finished the training, that they also wanted materials they could use. So um, we developed the PowerPoint presentation, which runs to over 270 slides okay. and it covers it's it's it covers every section that people will have done in the online course mm -hmm. and it's a very useful support for people who are um, delivering workshops okay brilliant after completing the training also within that you get your facilitation guide there are handouts for particular sections and um, people will also have access to all of the interactive maps mm -hmm. and they will also have um, be able to download the condom demonstration video or any of the other video pieces that they want to use with their groups. So there's a lot in the resource pack when people are finished the training. Fab. And like similar to the videos that we were showing earlier, yeah. all those kind of videos can be used in the yeah. classroom. Lovely stuff. Um, someone is asking about editing the PowerPoint resources. Um, for So I would say there that, that they're given as they are, but that you could save it yourself, download your own copy and they yeah. can be edited from there. Yeah. Again, if anyone is having any issues in that sense, do just get in touch with us at info at sexualhealthcentre.com. 
Um, someone's asking, we covered this a little bit earlier, is the platform user friendly for a non-tech user? So I feel I think you kind of covered that yeah, earlier. Yeah. Um, so short answer is yes, but again, do get in touch with us if there's any questions. Um, and someone's asking, how often can they come back to the program before having to complete it? Perfect. So as many times as you need to. So okay. the, from the minute somebody makes an account, that account will be in existence. So you okay. can come back every week to have a look at it. You might come do the program and next year, you know, sometime in 2021, you want to come back and do a refresher. Yeah. No problem, log on. Your account will be there from the minute you create it, tracking your progress. If you complete the program, you can go back and just module by module, pick it subject, refresh mm -hmm. yourself at any stage. That's the joy and the beauty of it. Like it's, you don't, it's yours. anytime, yeah. anywhere, it's available. Brilliant. <laughs> um, someone, I think this is covered a bit as well. Someone's asking about using the animations as part of the teaching. So obviously any of the yeah. resources that are there are there for you yeah. to use. Um, someone is asking, apologies name for scrolling. Um, do we have contraception packs available? Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, I mean, we, at the centre, we provide free condoms and lubricant as a mm -hmm. drop-in and also as a, a postal service. Yeah. The postal service started as a COVID response, but it's been something that there's been such huge demand for. Then um, we will continue to do that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a no-brainer not to do it. Um, if anybody needs condoms for demonstrations or whatever, okay. they can contact us. And just to point out that it is just condoms that we provide at the centre yes. at the moment and not on their other yeah. kinds of contraception right now. Um, somebody is asking, is it more suitable for transition year or fifth year? So I suppose realistically, transition year, if you're 16 upwards, mm -hmm. the, the whole programme really would be applicable to mm -hmm. that age group. Um, 15 is kind of on the borderline. So again, that's kind of up to the personal judgment of mm -hmm. the group. If you have a very mature 15 year old or somebody who needs more mature information, then they can deliver it that way. Um, I suppose, as Phil said, it is more geared to, if we talk about it in a school sense, senior cycle. But again, the PowerPoint can be edited and people can use other aspects of it for younger groups. So a lot of the information is transferable and it really is just up to the judgment of the professional. Like we, you know, I always feel it's important to say like, you know, they, we all know best, you know the groups you're dealing with. If you know the young people you're working with, you have an idea of what they probably realistically need to know. Mm -hmm. And this is designed, like sexual health is an aspect of daily living, as we always say. It's natural, it's normal, and young people are curious and they want to know. It's better that they have the information. So if in doubt, Absolutely. use your judgment, but use the slideshow. These are, this is facts, it's, you know, health information, it's proper, use it, give it to them. Brilliant. Um, I have someone also asking just about the NCCA and whether how it ties in with the curriculum. So just if like, let's say, for example, in a practical setting, if I'm a youth worker, not necessarily following the curriculum exactly, does it still suit me in that circumstance or? Absolutely. So I suppose okay. if you're a youth worker and you have a bit more flexibility in how you deliver it, you can pick and choose your modules when you do it. So somebody could decide to devote, you know, a session a week to a particular topic and something that's relevant to the young people you're working with that's coming up. So as Phil said, it covers every area of sexual health. So like as an example, if consent was a worry with a group somebody is working with, mm -hmm. a youth worker probably would have a lot of flexibility to hone in, sure. use all of the resources and spend longer having, you know, kind of interactive games, using some of the examples, playing the videos and having in-depth discussions around that. So they can tailor it to whatever they need. All of the material is there for them. Great. Um, another one here hear just about facilitating then so someone's asking should it be delivered by two people or does it really matter do you have any advice on doing it on your own or no that doesn't really matter it's, I suppose it's all about a person's comfort level okay you know whatever works for them um, but as I said you know we were very mindful um, with the resources that if somebody was facilitating solo that they would have everything they needed okay perfect um, I don't have anything else for the moment. I'm sorry if I have missed anybody's questions, but I think I've gotten everything in there. If there is anything else, please do get in touch with us at info at sexualhealthcentre.com. And I'll just, I think we're going to wrap it up there. So I'll just... Can I just say one more thing before please, we wrap Phil, up? Please, Phil, work away. I just want to say thank you to Tim <laughs> at Farkin Crane yes. for lighting this so nicely today. And to all the, the staff here for this very nice space. And also to Anthony Fleming for the audiovisual stuff today. Um, massive thank you. Brilliant. Um, I do, sorry, have one final question here. Someone's wondering um, about any endorsement from the Department of Education and Skills or any NCCA endorsement there or involvement or who is this connected to exactly which department? Perfect. 
Okay, so the funding for this project came through the Department of Children and Youth Affairs, it was, before mm -hmm. the name changed. Yeah. Um, so, but it's a, a sexual health centre initiative. Perfect, great. Okay, super. So we're going to leave it at that. I just want to thank you all so much for joining us, for taking time out of your day for ne yet another Zoom call. <laughs> so I hope that today has been at least a little bit different for you and um, kept you engaged. And we will, of course, have this launch recorded so that if anyone needs to come back to it and have a look or get some more info, you can do. Um, you can do that through www.sexualhealthcentre.com. And I just want to thank you all and thanks to my lovely panel today. Thank you. And we'll wrap thank it up you. there. Brilliant.